Hello everyone and welcome back. In the next few lessons in this section we're going to talk about the powerful drag and drop functionality of Angular Material. So for that, in order to build our example, we're going to be using here the drag and drop component that you can find here under the source app folder here in the drag drop folder. So this is a component that we're going to review in a moment that we are going to be using as a starting point for this section. The first thing that we need to do is to link this component to our application. So let's give access to this component here using the side menu of the application. Let's say that here below the about page, we are going to be adding here a new menu entry in our application that I'm going to paste in. So this is going to be the drag and drop screen and we are going to be activating here the drag and drop example route. Now this route is already configured in our application. So if we now try this out in a larger window, we are going to see that when we click here on the hamburger menu, we are going to have here a new entry, drag and drop that we have just added. And if we click on it, we have here the drag and drop component, which is currently empty. Let's quickly review this component. So if we open here the source app folder and we go to drag and drop, we're going to find here the component. So the component is currently mostly empty. Its template does not have any functionality other than here an initial title. And we can see here some CSS that we're going to be using. So the focus of the lesson will be on the drag and drop functionality itself and not on the styling. The styling is already here, ready to be used. Let's have a quick look here at the component itself. So as we can see, the component is currently empty, but we already have here some data to use in our example. Currently, this just contains a list of lessons. In a normal application, the data would be read from the backend and fed into the template, but in this case, to keep things simple and focused on the drag and drop functionality, we're going to be using this lessons array instead. Let's then start building our drag and drop example. We are going to create here a list of lessons that the user is going to be able to drag and is going to be able to reposition the lesson inside the list to a new position. So we will be able, for example, to drag lesson number one and put it on position number seven of the array, etc. Let's then start by building this list and displaying it here on the screen. So we're going to create here a container for our list and we're going to be adding it some styling. Let's add here the lessons list CSS class. Next, we are going to loop through the list of lessons and we're going to print them out to the screen. So let's add here a new element, which is going to correspond to a lesson row in our list. And we're going to be adding it here, the CSS class lesson. Let's loop through the lessons using ng4. Let's apply here the syntax, let lesson of lessons. So now we have here the lesson data. Let's go ahead and let's print the lesson title. Let's now have a quick look at this list by switching here to a larger window. And as we can see, we are printing out here our list of lessons. But if we click here on the list, no drag and drop functionality is yet in place. Let's start by adding it. We are going to switch back here to our template and we are going to make this list draggable, meaning that there are elements inside it that we can drag and drop by adding here to this container element the directive cdk drop list. Notice the prefix cdk in this directive, so this is not a typical mat prefix from Angular Material, this is the cdk prefix from the Angular Component Development Kit that Angular Material uses internally and that is also developed by the same Angular team. So now we have declared this container as a drag and drop container. Let's now identify the elements that can be dragged. We can do so by applying here to each lesson the CDK drag directive. And with this, each lesson in our list is now draggable. Let's try this out. If we switch here to a larger window, we're going to select here any of these lessons. And as we can see, we can now drag it. But notice a couple of things. The styling applied to the dragged element is not ideal. We can see that the font is different, for example. And also, whenever we move this through the list, we can see that there is no drop zone in place. It would be nice to see here a drop zone where we can drop our dragged element. Also, when we release the mouse, we're going to see that the list 
remains the same so we can drag the element but the element is not switching position this is normal this is because even though the element is draggable we are not reacting to the drop event so the drag and drop directives are going to emit a drop event and when we receive that event we need to take some action on the list in our particular case we want to reorder the list according to the drag and drop operation performed by the user so let's see how we're going to do that. The way that we capture here the drop event is by adding here an event handler. So this is a plain angular event handler and we need to detect the CDK drop list dropped event. And here we need to add here a new method to our class that we are simply going to call drop. And we need to pass in here the drag and drop event itself. We can have access to it using here dollar $event using alt enter let's go ahead and let's create this method here so we have here a new drop method and let's add here the correct type to this event here this is an event of type cdk drag drop so that's the correct name for this event and it takes one generic parameter which is going to be the type of the list where we are dragging and dropping so in this case this is a list of lessons Let's now have a look at the API here of the drag and drop event. So the event contains all the necessary information for understanding exactly what the user did while doing the drag and drop operation. So we have here a container element. This is going to point to the CDK drop list where the drag and drop operation occurred. We also have here elements such as, for example, the previous index and the current index. So this is going to tell us exactly what element was dragged by the user and exactly where the element was dropped. We also have here other elements such as previous container that we're going to be covering in our next lessons where we have multiple drag and drop target zones with multiple lists that we can drag from one list to the other. Right now, in this simple drag and drop example, we are going to be focusing here on the previous and the current index. To make sure that we really understand how these indexes work, let's go ahead and let's print them out here to the screen. So we're going to be starting here with the previous index and let's clearly identify this here in the logging statement. And let's also add here some logging for the current index. Let's try this out to see what we get here in the console. So we have here the same component with the dev tools opened. Let's grab here, for example, the third element. So this is going to be position 0, 1 and 2. So we are grabbing the element on position 2 and we're going to drag it and we're going to drop it here on position 0. And as we can see, the previous and the current index work as one would expect. As we can see, the drag and drop event is getting correctly detected and the drop event contains all the information that we need to modify our list. Now, instead of writing that code manually ourselves, based here on the previous and the current index, we are going to instead use a utility method from Angular Material that makes it very simple to perform the drag and drop operation. We could also write this logic ourselves, but think about it. This is logic that you're going to need in just about every example of drag and drop that you use in your application, right? It's always going to be the same logic. You want to reposition the dropped element in an existing array. So in order to make things very simple for us, we're going to be using the following utility, move item in array, which is included in Angular Material and makes drag and drop super convenient. So the first argument that we need to pass in here is the array where we want to perform our drag and drop operation. So we are going to be pointing this to the lessons array. Notice that this operation here is going to mutate the lessons array directly. So if you don't want this operation to mutate the array, you might want to create a copy of the array first. There won't be any return type here from this method. This is going to directly mutate here the lessons array. The second argument that you need to pass in here is going to be the previous index of the drop event. And the last argument that we need to pass in here is going to be the current index. So this is all the information that the move item in array method needs in order to perform the drag and drop correctly. Let's now have a quick look at this in action. If we now try again the same drag and drop operation, so I'm going to select here element in position 2. 
and I'm going to drag it here to position 0 and notice that this time around the drop took place. The list has been reordered and this element data tables is now the first one in the array. So the basic drag and drop functionality is already working correctly as expected. We are going to take this one step further though. We are going to improve here the drag and drop experience. Notice the following. Whenever I select here an element and I drag it, we can see that there are some strange looking styles applied here to this particular dragged element. So you might not notice that, for example, the font is not the same as the rest of the page. Also, when we drag this element here to a given position, there is no clear drop zone in place. So it would be great to know exactly where the element is going to be dropped when I release it by visualizing the drop zone in an explicit way. So that would improve a lot the drag and drop experience. Let's see how can we implement these features. We're going to go back here to our application and we're going to be adding here to the drag and drop component some specific drag and drop styles. Now these styles, you might need to apply them to multiple components in your application that also have a drag and drop functionality in place. So they are not specific to this drag and drop example component. Let's have a look at these styles. You can find them here in your project, here in this mixins partial SAS file. So notice the underscore here. This means that this is a partial SAS file that can be easily included in any other SAS file. We can take some of the contents here of this file and include it here in the drag and drop component SAS file, for example. So SAS is a CSS preprocessor that you are probably familiar with that has this extension SCSS and that provides us with an extended version of CSS. One of the functionalities of SAS that we have available that we don't have in plain CSS are mixins. So mixins are small snippets of CSS that can be easily included in other CSS files. We're going to see how to do that in a moment. First, let's have a look here at the styles that we're going to be including in our component. We have here several different styles that mark the dragged element in a more visible way. We have here a couple of nice animations that are going to make the experience more fluid. And we have here a style for a drop placeholder that is going to identify very clearly the drop zone using here a dotted border and an element with a gray background. So all of these styles are not specific to our component and you're going to need it in any screen in your application where you are using drag and drop. Let's then see how can we quickly include these styles here in our drag and drop component. We are going to open here the drag and drop SAS file of this component and we are going to start by importing here our mixins file. So we are going to be using the syntax at import and we are going to access here the mixins file that contains our SAS mixin. You can see it here. So we have imported here mixins without the underscore. This is important. The underscore means that it's a partial file that can be easily imported in other files. Without that underscore, this functionality would not work. Now, all we have to do is to include the drag and drop CSS here in this component. We can do so in the following way. We are going to use at include that again, it's a SAS specific functionality that we don't have available on plain CSS. And we are going to call here our drag and drop mixin. So a mixin is like a function that you call that includes some CSS here on the place where you called it. So whenever we call here this function, we are actually taking this CSS and we are applying it at the place where this mixing function was called. You could even provide here arguments and use them internally here inside your mixing. It's a very powerful functionality of SAS. So now our drag and drop styling is included here on our component. Let's go ahead and let's try this out. So if we now select an element, notice that the font of the element is correctly applied. You can see a nice drop shadow around the dragged element. And if we see here, we can drop it, but the target drop zone is still missing. In order to add this drop zone, we're going to switch back here to our template and we're going to add here inside the lesson element, 
a drag and drop placeholder. So this is going to be a plain div and we're going to apply it here, the CSS class drop placeholder. So this is one of the CSS classes that we have imported from our mixin. In order to make this a drag and drop placeholder, we need to apply the structural directive CDK drag placeholder. Before trying this out, let's also add here to our list a CSS class that is part of our drag and drop mixin. So we're going to be marking this as a drag and drop list. These extra CSS classes are going to be adding some nice animations to our user experience. Let's have a look at this in action. So if we switch here to our larger window, you are going to select here one of the elements and notice that when I drag it here over the list, there is a nice drop zone with a dotted border and a gray background where we can drop our element. But also we have here some nice animations whenever we do the transition here between the elements and when we drop the element in place. So this all adds up for a better drag and drop user experience. And with this, we have covered our basic drag and drop functionality. Next, we are going to show you a more advanced example of drag and drop where we have multiple target drop zones. So we are going to show you how to drag an item from one list to another. This is coming right up in our next lesson.